Welcome to the Sly Gittins Tech Simplified channel. And today I got a fantastic guest. Her name is Jen Crumley and she is going to rock your world with her career. I'm so lucky to have her. So Jen, will you mind telling my audience how you got started and a little bit about your background? Of course. First and foremost, I want to say thank you so much, Sly, for having me on today. I'm honored and humbled to be here. I love the fact that you're empowering women in technology, so kudos to you um, for making such a huge difference. Um, I did watch your past sessions, and they're awesome. And so again, thank you for thinking of me. For me, myself, I... I started out in telecommunication sales. And so I recall like the boiler room days of making cold calls and, and, and trying to get people to switch over to a long distance carrier um, back when we had the choice to do so. And so my first real job was at a, well, first at high school, I worked my way. It was called ACI communications. I um, started selling and then worked my way up to a verification and then became the manager. And so for me, building relationships and, and selling just came so naturally for me. And so that's where I started. And then I moved on and I started selling yachts. <laughs> so it was a place called Awesome Yachts. We sold yachts that were 52 to 150 feet catamaran yachts. Mm -hmm. um, and so I attended boat shows, did a lot of sea trials, traveled to some amazing places all around the world. Um, I had a dual role, and so I was in sales as well as um, like an IT administrator. So in addition to sales, I was the network administrator where I would set up domains um, and also uh, domains and um, uh, basically like users on Microsoft Exchange, um, NT, that, that's what it was back then. And so I was the, the web administrator. Um, also creating websites as well and um, wearing multiple hats in IT. Um, so thereafter, <laughs> I'm just going to kind of give you through my history. I worked at a place called Modus IT and we did um, IT consulting services for multiple enterprise companies. Um, I moved on to a company called Miro Technologies. Um, I was a manager of business development and sales. And so I work there and then the company was purchased by Boeing Defense and so this was an amazing time in my life where I got to work with the DOD um, Department of Defense and uh, with foreign militaries as well um, I had clients like SOCOM, SOFSA, uh, UK Ministry of Defense, the Royal Saudi Air Force as well as the Presidential Hilo uh, Marine One under Barack Obama's administration so this was a really fun time in my life I then went on to become, uh, or I was in your shoes as a sales engineer for a company called MindTouch. They do help authoring um, software for companies and allows them to self-serve. And so thereafter, I worked at another company called uh, Planet Together, where I was the director of client success. They do advanced planning and scheduling software for manufacturing companies. And so I realized then... Um, how much I missed being in sales and just a whole roller coaster ride of, of, of closing sales and deals. And I then went on to be the VP of sales at Templar Shield, um, a VAR, an implementer of security software uh, tools and um, services. And at Sem Templar Shield is where I had the pleasure to meet you um, and work with you and uh, your partner, um, Ingram Micro, and um, we had some really great times. Um, Thereafter, I'm just kind of giving you my whole. <laughs> I landed at VIP Cyber Defense. I was the VP of Sales there, another VAR of uh, cybersecurity software and um, services, where I was there for almost three years. Worked directly with the CEO, Steve Groom. Um, I loved it there, had no intention to leave, and then um, Security Scorecard extended an offer I couldn't refuse. And this is where I am today. I landed there and um, in, in, or landed here in 2020 um, in January. And what I love about Security Scorecard is our mission to make the world a, a safer place. It embeds um, security DNA, which is aligned with my passion in technology and security, where I work with um, enterprise clients like Disneyland, Live Nation, Amex, um, 
Cisco, Qualcomm, the city of San Diego, city of LA, and however, at the same time in 2020 of January, my husband and I also purchased a, an ice cream shop in the South Bay of San Diego. Um, it's called Imperial, it's in Imperial Beach and it's called um, Cowabunga Ice Cream and Coffee. So I do have the entrepreneurial spirit under my belt where I am the CEO and of my own consulting cybersecurity company and the owner of my own business as well. Um, and so if you ever make it out to San Diego, California, please do come in and uh, visit us at Cowabunga. I would love that. Sorry, it was a long-winded one. <laughs> that her story was amazing. I didn't even know all those gels, man. Like, what can she do, right? She did this all in one lifetime, and she got so much more to accomplish. So, again, that was a, a treat for us. Um, can you talk about what was your education to get here? Because um, uh, sometimes I know I got some folks that, like, didn't go to college and still phenomenal. I don't think you need to go to college for certain de degrees and jobs, especially in IT. What was your, what was your path? My path. So for myself, um, mm -hmm. how I, I got into IT, I, my father was very technical. And so we used to build um, computers together and I love taking it apart and putting it back together. I love to see how things work. And so in college, I started down the path of uh, computer science. And so after taking a bunch of uh, calculus courses and, and physics and, and computer programming and, and, you know, it was all fun at first, I realized that I didn't enjoy compiling and programming. And so I switched majors and I went into um, information technology or information technology management. And I completed my bachelor's of science at California State um, San Marcos and in IT and so I worked full-time and I went to school full-time I paid for my own education and so when you do that you really truly truly appreciate things when you earn it and so my passion um, for me has always been IT since the very beginning and I feel like in a space like this it's always changing um, especially technology and you have to be village uh, diligent uh, and move with as things change. And so if you want to be in a space that's always innovating and, um, you know, fostering growth, um, keeps you on your toes as well. So that's why I knew IT was for me. Okay, sweet. That's great. Um, that actually goes into the next question mm -hmm. is what would you have told yourself when you first started? Because I feel like you went, you have so much valuable experience. What would you tell Jen getting into college that might have been helpful for you to know? Gosh, I, f I feel like back then I had to know what I wanted to do. What I would have told myself was it, there's no stress um, and you always have the pressure to pick a, a field and then that's the field you have to go into. Um, and that's the reason why it took me so long because I kept I changed my majors, um, didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I just felt like, okay, this, this is it. Is it for me? Um, I th think I tell myself, you know, don't, don't worry so much about, about what you're going to do because whatever you do, a lot of people have a degree and something that they're not even, it's not even associated with what they're doing. So just, you know, relax. It all, it all pan out in the end. Don't, stress yourself out of no and having to know what you want to do at that particular moment sweet. life's always changing all right sweet that's good that's great advice because um i started off as an english major switch <laughs> and then i switched into business um and then i took my it class got like 100 on the first couple of tests and i'm like man this is easy i didn't even study for this thing and then i started wow. looking up jobs i'm like man this these jobs pay more than uh, these other majors so then i just went all in right and they're doing information technology and marketing. Um, oh, okay. I have a gift to gab. I love I love selling things, and I love to get people to to something. Like it didn't matter where it was. Like I did open mic nights. I would I created a the place for artists to come to promote themselves. Right. Um, like now, women, y'all got like your story is amazing. All I did is create a space for you to amplify your man message. But I've been doing this since I was younger. So this is something I just like to do. So then I just fused both of them together. And I started noticing marketing, like Facebook 
came out right when I came to school. And I'm like, well, that's an IT tool, but it's also a marketing tool. Oh, I yeah. think if I'm not mistaken, it either I think it's Google's number one for ads, then maybe mm-hmm. Facebook. It is in a marketing advertising company, right? These yeah. tools has become they fused together. So that's why I knew I'd be all right and um in pursuing this. But like you said, I went to school for database building. I don't build databases <laughs> now. I don't know how to do that anymore. Right. right? But um but it was, but it was helpful, a requirement. Right? Yeah. It was a requirement to pass. So um let's switch it in. Let's switch gears a little bit because we was we got deep into your history. Let's pull it back out because I know we're all human. So what are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do outside of work? I know you said you got a, your business, but what you do you do? Yeah. For fun? Oh, for fun. So for myself, yeah. <laughs> I like, I, I do Muay Thai. And okay. so I box. Um, it, it also, it's, it helps me stay active and gets a lot out of me. So if I'm upset, I'll go hit bags. Um, teach my daughters how to, you know, defend themselves, especially being a woman or, you know, and uh, in the male dominated space, you know, I have mm-hmm. to definitely stand up for myself <laughs> and so be able to protect myself. So I love to just hit bags, do Muay Thai. And I also, um, love karaoke don't laugh at me <laughs> that's fun I, I got my wife to do that and we did 50 cent man and she was so uncomfortable up there but awesome. it was hilarious man i can't <laughs> sing i'll be trying to sing too in the club is this. that what you yeah it's or, called in the club man <laughs> it's, it's, go go short let me not even do it it's, it's your birthday. birthday but it was oh. not that type of bar it was like a straight pop bar so when i put awesome. it on everybody was like what is going on here you know my wife and i did it and uh, we, we got you know, we've got some of the words too. I'm like, I can't remember all these words anymore, but it was fun. We, we do so it all the time when we go out. You know, oh, so. I have it in my house. So ah, that's great. That's different. <laughs> I need to, I'm gonna have to do that. Get the get the get the family. It's an icebreaker. Like yeah. We did that at my friend's house when we had a party. He he actually mm-hmm. brought the karaoke and we all started doing it. It was pretty fun. It's a good icebreaker too. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So what is some this? What are some of your favorite books? Um, it doesn't have to be about um, career, like self-help books. It could be anything. And what's some of your favorite podcasts that you like to listen to in your free time? Uh, so books, uh, podcasts, um, I don't, I'm trying to think. Of. Mm-hmm. So the most, well, inspirational book that I've read recently was Becoming by Michelle Obama. It's just so relatable. Um, her sharing, just sharing her journey, how she had to overcome all these obstacles and stereotypes and, and how she she was perceived by the media um, when she spoke so powerfully and just, you know, people felt threatened just the way it was just so much that I could relate to just all of this, which is so amazing and, you know, influential um, today. She's just historically just an amazing woman, just a breath of fresh air to read another, um, I'm trying to think book you I think you read this one um but it was it's a book um basically by Robert is it Kiyos, uh, Kiyosaki it's um, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Rich, yes yes there you go so you read that educating oh, you yeah. about the importance of um uh, you know gaining financial independence through real estate entrepreneurship and so that's a huge piece of me <laughs> why I'm always constantly trying to reinvest into something <laughs> And that's why, like, once, yeah, once I saw her, like, you don't understand, when I first saw Jen, she was just so poised, she knew where everything was going, at least that was my perception of it, and I was newer into my career, so I'm still trying to figure myself out, if I want to do sales, I want to do tech, I do a little bit of both, I'm trying to help them, right, so, um, yeah, she's, I could definitely see that, um, and I, even I do that now, like, I started getting into real estate, like I told you before the interview. Oh, yeah. And, um, different business ideas, right? Because, mm-hmm. again, um, why not, right? It's definitely helpful, and especially when you have children. Um, oh, yeah. I just want to set that precedent that anything that she, my daughter wants to do, she mm-hmm. can. She can see me making these decisions now. And, then, you know, I, told, I joke with my wife. I'm like, by seven, I'm going to be teaching her to do her own business plan, right? You know, so... <laughs> You know, I'm joking. I like, we, like I got like I just bought some books now. It's like mm-hmm. um, like babies um, for physics. Oh, um, you're gonna have to buy a whole bunch of baby books now. <laughs> yeah, I got a ton of books now, right? So it was like ridiculous. I literally made like a extra. I got like an extra spending saving account just for oh. books, right? So I That's told my awesome. wife on Black Friday, I'm about to stack up on them. I got like 20 books. I got to get her 
so then we could read through it. And some of it, I don't know, like physics. I didn't really take any physics class growing up. Uh, right? yeah. So I'm like, I'm learning this too, man. I don't care. No shame <laughs> my game. I got some coding books in there. We got architect books. We got all awesome. types of stuff. Poetry books, everything. So. There's another good uh, book. It's called The Ellipsis Manual by Chase Hughes. It's actually okay. written by a CIA um, intelligence field operation. Um, and so it, it analyzes human interaction and behavior, which is intriguing because being in sales, you know, it helps you to read pet people better and, and, and their behavior and how it can um, be a better read just on people. So it's kind of super secret spy stuff that's really cool to read, too. So I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah. And then just <laughs> one to add on there, um, I think his name is Daniel Goldsman, uh, oh. Emotional Intelligence. Um, oh, okay. like, I think he's like the grandfather of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And the, I remember in college, I read like six or seven books and he had a ton of free one, like lectures he had on um, YouTube at the time. Um, but it's, it's so many more things on emotional intelligence. I think that's the one thing that's helped me. I'm never the most technical. I'm never the most salesy person in the room, but I can merge them together. And I know yeah. how to work with people and different personalities, know when to lead, know when the person that you can tell they're a dominant person. So let them leave for now, but I'm still there. Right. So those are definitely some um, cool tips that everyone can share too. And then before we wrap this up is how can we contact you? Um, shout out your business again on the side. I want to make sure okay. that, um, thank you. I already promote it. And, um, to go ahead. How can you, how can the audience contact you? You can reach me on LinkedIn um, or you can reach me at my email. It's Jen at the Kika company.com. Um, but LinkedIn, you can find me under Jen Crumley and I'll add you, you know, I love to network with people. So feel free to reach out. If there's an opportunity to work together, I'd love that. All right, sweet. So Jen, that's all we have for today. Okay. Again, fantastic story. I hope you <laughs> enjoyed it. If you want to know more, reach out to her. If you're in San Diego, make sure to grab an ice cream for me. My favorite one is vanilla. Uh, I know it's plain. So <laughs> go to Cowabunga, get that vanilla with some cookie dough, and say Sly sent you. And now you know. So Sly Gittins and Jen Crumley are out. Peace.